We're so honored to have you here, the congressional candidate for the New York, New York 16th District, and we're really happy that you're here to talk to us. Hello everyone, my name is Andam Deborah Jorgis. I'm a resident of Mount Vernon, former special education teacher from the Bronx and Washington Heights, um, and now also congressional candidate for this district. When I think of the climate crisis, one of the most poignant memories I have occurred a couple years ago when I visited my extended family in Eritrea, a small nation in the Horn of Africa next to Ethiopia and Sudan. For the majority of my trip, we stayed in Asmara, the capital city in the highlands where the thin air has strengthened the lungs of some of the world's best marathon runners. One day we took a trip a couple hours to Masawa, a coastal city on the Red Sea. As we drove out of the mountains, my uncle pointed excitedly out to some trees that another one of my uncles had actually planted when he was there. I counted them, I, I looked at the trees, I saw only 10. And as I pondered my uncle's grand tree planting effort, I began to notice my surroundings even more. Except for the 10 trees that were there, everything around me was brown. This was desertification. My family's ethnic home was a country that has turned into dust. Now, considering the disparate impacts of pollution that communities of, colors face, communities of color face here, the threat of coastal flooding in the river towns, why am I talking about desertification in a small country many of you may have never even heard of? Well, first of all, yesterday was World Soil Day, so shout out to soil. But more importantly, I highlight this anecdote because climate change is a global threat. Yet the interconnected struggle of the global south is often crowded out. Healthy soil, for example, prevents erosion. It reduces flood risks and stores huge amounts of carbon, helping us fight climate change, up to some, sometimes up to 75% of land-based carbon. Since the early 1980s, however, a quarter of the planet's land has been despoiled, and 1% each year of topsoil continues to be lost. The reason desertification has not been a priority is because 90% of the 2.1 billion people who live in dry lands live in developing countries like my family's ethnic home of Eritrea. But the effects are enormous. Land conflicts in Sudan, dust storms in Central Asia, food price riots around the world, and refugees and migrants fleeing all of this. Combating desertification is necessary for us here because it not only reduces greenhouse gas emissions, but it helps food security and the storage of clean water. We must take an internationalist and intersectional approach to this issue. One of the reasons why I'm running for Congress is because for too long, we as people, adults, our representatives, have struggled to escape a parochial view of the world and see the problems of our neighbors as our own. We have an opportunity, a necessity, now to come together with an equity and justice-based lens, whether we're talking about New York or Nigeria. We're all in this together. So how do we move forward? The Global South is now responsible for about 60% of current carbon emissions as they try to develop. And that number is expected to rise to 90% of global emissions by 2050. The issue ultimately is not whether I'm recycling in Mount Vernon, even though I do, and you should too, if China is still giving $1 trillion in subsidies every single year to fossil fuel companies. Like the young people in Ardsley who've stood up and taken a leadership role in this fight, we need to urge the United States government to take a leadership role, role in the climate struggle. Right on, yeah. Our government has come nowhere near close to meeting the minimal commitments needed to fund international development through the UN Green Climate Fund. But looking around in the crowd, seeing Westchester unite, I'm emboldened. Thank you to Anna, her family, all of the young people for coming out, because I know with all of you, us acting locally, thinking globally, and centering the struggle of frontline communities, vulnerable communities, historically marginalized people, we can win this fight against clim climate change and secure a Green New Deal for the world. Thank you very much. Yeah!